Two Mega Pops is an achievement in Balloons Tower Defense 6 where we need to get 2 million or more Pops with a single tower and I've just realized I started with the wrong hero. In this video we're going to be doing this challenge with the Balloon Area Denial System. We've already done it with the Bears but have we done it with this? No we have not so we're going to be doing it in this video but first we need some towers in which we're going to be able to use in order for us to get the 920 in which we need to afford a darting gunner. I place the engineer here so we can utilize both of these traits so that we can utilize the max pierce that the engineer offers. So that any time the engineer is firing, most of the time he's firing either through this straight line or this straight line down here. Hope you've all had a lovely Christmas and Boxing Day where you are. Christmas Eve and Christmas Day for me was lovely. Boxing Day, half of it was horizontal because I was just feeling so tired and then lightheaded and felt really sick after that. So, not too sure about that particular part of my Christmas holidays, but it is just one of those things. I have a bit of a cold if you can't tell already. I have a deeper voice, not by choice, but by circumstances beyond my control. And we finish this up, and that is a yes. Okay, so let's put the engineer on strong so we can target these yellow blues, and then go back to last so that we could continue with our max pierce gain or max pierce usage gain. Game, one of the two. Mm, these yellow blues are going to start being a bit of a problem, aren't they? Even if we put the engineer on strong, we're not going to be able to try and get all of these, are we? Oh, we managed it, but we're still having issues with the rest of the balloons. Strong engineer with a creepy idol. Is this going to make a difference for our needs? I hope so. Just chuck a few of them away. So that hopefully it will make the diff... Uh, still not that good. Nope, it's not doing anything. Let's try a shooty turret behind Gerardo. Hopefully this will provide enough health for us to be able to get through this. Hopefully. Uh, at the end of the day, still reliant on Pierce being a factor in all this. And that's round 13 completed. Round 14. It's the second lot of yellows I'm more worried about, honestly. Can we do this? I believe we can. The shooter turret provides very early means of being able to get through these balloons, but still... Uh, getting you to find a straight line. Perhaps it's better if you go on last. Oh, actually, we can now afford our darling gunner friend. Um, we'll put him here, actually. I think this is slightly better than the other option, but we've got to micromanage our time here so that hopefully we'll be able to get all of the strongest, most balloons kind of whittled down so that our other towers can then deal with the rest. But I think... Some early pickles is going to be an absolute necessity for us to get through this scenario. Once we get to Buckshot, pickles is going to be more of a detriment than an actual asset because of how slow we fire anyways. But are we going to be needing that sharpening stone in order to increase our pierce? Because I honestly think with the low pierce that this has, that is going to be a benefit. But obviously, we don't have access to sharpening stone at this given point in time. Would love to whittle down those regrows, but that's just not going to be possible, is it now? Okay, now we have access to Sharpening Stone, if I can actually select Geraldo for that factor. And now we've got both Pickles and Sharpening Stone to our benefit. Increase damage per dart, and increase Pierce per dart. With a cost of attack speed drop. Ah, Camo Balloon. Normally put down a Spike Pile at the end, or a Nail Pile, sorry. But with advanced targeting, we don't need such help. We can just go through to uh, camo targeting and then faster power spin. Don't you regrow on me? Thank you very much. And powerful darts will give us even more pierce, which is very handy. Oh, great. We are just shy of the mortar monkey. We can't get that either. Oh, isn't that just fun? I guess we'll be retrying this scenario while not getting either a sharpening stone or an extra pickle. So that we could afford a mortar monkey. 
I have decided instead that sharpening stone and pickles are both a foreign concept, or at least pickles in the early game. Alright, with this being said, let's just put you into place. We can now afford a mortar monkey, so that we don't have to worry about any of those pesky leads right here. And it is thematically appropriate for this to send mortars of snowballs rather than the other things that it would send. Although the only downside is that I did not aim my darling gunner properly. Do we need pickles? Um, do we need pickles? That is the question. What we do need to do, however, is micromanage two different sorts of monkeys at the same time. Being the mortar and the darling gunner, but because we've got this in a almost fixed position not quite fixed uh do you mind not missing thank you let's try and hold off from using geraldo's as items for as long as possible so because i want to get buckshot as soon as we can and thanks to powerful darts it essentially is a better version of the early stage sharpening stone sorry early stage sharpening stone Trying to play this game with a cold. It's harder than you think it is while you're talking. Lots of yellow balloons on this round. Quite revitalized. Oh, there's zebra balloons as well. You know what? Still not a bad thing, you know. Don't have to worry about said stuff, I believe. And now we can afford a buckshot, which is very powerful. And because your fire's very slow. It means that if we put pickles on, yes, each buckshot is more powerful, but we fire them far less often, which makes them a bigger threat than you would think otherwise. Don't ask me why I'm trying to imitate a deep South American accent, but all I can say is that the military is the most American thing ever. The bigger the guns, the better they are. The bigger the dinner plate, the more Texan it is. Keep having these lead issues. Need more firepower. Specifically, firepower that can get through the lead layer. Nothing like good old fashioned artillery shells. If they can actually land their target. And there we go, we have landed our targets. Oh, almost all of them. And now just this ceramic to get through. And that is round 38. Right, the buckshot will be able to deal with this Moab without any external support to it. Just like so. Come on, there we go. Just down to the ceramics now. Just some micromanaging required. And as you can see... We have ourselves a pierce issue here, which we try and need to compensate for at some point in the future. How dare you not pop those black balloons fully. Until we get the bads, we are going to rely on slow gameplay and a lot of micromanaging with the swivel of our buckshot here. Because once we get the bads, our attack rate will dramatically increase. And alongside that, we will be able to target balloons automatically rather than um, needing to rely on a locked position or a um, control with the mouse movement. And I think that should be around round 45, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, there we go. There we go, target independent. That's what I meant earlier. Sorry about that. I know I'm getting it wrong again. But we'll put Joe's fire on you so that we can pop lead without needing this friend anymore. Your 196 pops will not be in vain, Mortar Monkey. You got us to this point, and now this, along with other towers, can handle the rest. Do you think these so these monkeys on these zip lines suffer more if we play on fast forward speed rather than normal speed? Do they suffer from more G-force? Or well, it's just the fact that time travels fast and they suffer the same g-force that they would normally have otherwise. It's overclock time. And you know which tower we're going to be placing this on. Be bads. 
The radar scanner is not needed at this given point in time, although there will be a point in time which will need MIB so that our beloved bats here can target DDTs without requiring Jerry's, but also for the fact that Jerry's cannot be used to solo a DDT. There's that gone, lovely. Got the jungle drums, got the, well, this one, which will soon be an MIB, up and running. But what are we going to be doing next? Although, alternatively, if you don't want a MIB, you could simply rely on the factor of a middle path glue storm visibility, which deletifies lead. So you can use that as a way of bypassing a lead weakness, which your towers may otherwise have. Round 63, we have stuff like that, lovely. And, oh God, got an itchy eye all of a sudden. No, thank you. I've been having enough troubles as it is recently with this gold. No, thank you. What a way to end off the year 2023 with a whole world gold. Let's get our glue gunners operational. Starting off with the Moab glue. And we'll go with bigger globs for the time being because it's free. And down here will be our middle path representative which will ensure that we can do extra damage against the balloons themselves. So, hopefully on round 76, the blue strike ability will be very useful. Because what this tower lacks is pierce. Each of these little balls that fires out, little buckshots that fire out, they all only have a very small amount of pierce, so we have to rely on the amount that we fire out rather than each individual one doing a huge job. We'll go glue strike first. And then call to arms. Then after call to arms, we'll go with balloon sabos and the absolute zero. Round 75 is going quite smooth at the moment. I believe, there we go. Now let's go strike and the ceramics should be done and dealt with. <laughs> I was about to be a little bit worried there when I said done and dealt with. Wait, why are they still on screen? There goes the first crew strike, along with that, the first set of ceramics on round 78. Yeah, I think the benefit of having our darning gunner over here so that if we do have any um, balloons on this side and we're firing this way, we can still fire towards the start and this middle point if that is necessary. But if we were over here, then we would be fighting against the grain and we wouldn't be utilizing all of the pierce, whatever pierce that we have against the balloons here we should be okay on, on this round actually we shouldn't have to deal with the um regrow population here because of the fact that we have enough firepower in order to prevent regrows from happening in the first place well that is just the plan anyway so we've got call to arms now which is lovely keep applying the overclock and there we go round 80. so let's wait for the glue from the there we go now apply that and then apply that. Lovely. Doing a lot of damage here, which is good. Which is very, very good. Now, imagine a two mega pops, like, sheet of all of the different towers that have done it, which have been able to do it without Geraldo. Now, I think that is a, um, <laughs> a reasonable thing that that could be possible, actually. A two megapops list of towers that can do it without using Geraldo. Or even better yet, without using a hero, period. Because I believe that there are some which can do that. Like, let's say, the Sentry Champion. Or a submarine of sorts. I wouldn't say the Energizer, but I would say the other two tier 5 submarines could definitely be possible without Geraldo. And obviously there have been records of two megapods without Geraldo. But just that Geraldo is so used that anytime we do a two megapods with Geraldo, and I know I'm using it, and I'm proving myself a little bit of a silly here, it just feels like every two megapods is so Geraldoized, if that's even a term. Geraldoized being you can place down an item that would normally not be used by another tower or another like power in this case and you're able to get through that round you're able to cheese through the round using a bit of a micromanaging sort of incentive here with Gerardo's shop 
You'll be able to get yourself up around. Right, two ZMGs. What are we going to do here? Just a bit. Hmm. Should I go after Azua first and then Sabos? That could be a strategy, actually. Go after Azua first and then Sabos. Like, obviously it's not as permanent as the Sabos would be. Unless, of course, you pop a balloon. But, at the same time, slowing down those Moab class balloons. Now, that is very enticing. Which is obviously something that we will exploit. I always try to do Absolute Zero then, Glue Strike, so that the Absolute Zero doesn't gain that bonus damage. But, in certain scenarios, you're just going to have to kind of just spam them so that you can get the most out of them. Oh gosh, a bunch of fortified Moabs can sometimes be very menacing in their own ways. Maybe the fortified status and how quick they go. Sometimes a fast speedy boy is better than a bulky slow boy in order to be able to get you through the scenarios in the perspective of the balloons themselves. Not the towers slash monkeys, but the balloons themselves. Can we do this? Yes, we can. Because we are the bads better than the pink bad on round 100. We have our first Sabo down here and another one on its way to becoming a Sabo. But we're just getting through these rounds. And I keep having the urge to sneeze as well. I think the worst kind of sneeze is one that is just slowly building up and then it decides to retreat. And then it come, tries to come back up again and it slowly retreats it. So it just teases you that you want to sneeze, but it doesn't quite want to come out. It's so annoying. Right, that's round 92, now round 93. So what awaits for us here? One, two, three, four, five, six. Freeze room. Apply the blue strike so we receive extra damage. And get ourselves that up and running. And then get these up and running. One good thing about Alpine Run is that the end of a track is very far away from the rest of the track. So you don't have to worry about too much about having like towers over on this end of the track. Because the majority of the time which a, bl a balloon is on the track is in the middle of the map. And this is very far away from the middle of the map. Which is lovely. Because sometimes the end of a track could be very near the start of a track. Which would pose a bit of a problem if your supporting towers are required to get you through the early portions of the game. So working our way through round 94, it is a little bit of a slog at times because it requires a bit of micromanagement when it comes to abilities. Like, abilities at the end of the day are a very integral part of your progression throughout the game. Without abilities, I think your chances of being able to do a 2 mega pop scenario is drastically decreased. Rely on those clicks of a button to get you through a scenario, and I should have used Call to Arms. For the next round, but I guess we're going to have to do some stalling here. In order to get Call to Arms up and running. Uh, in most scenarios, you cannot afford Homeland Defense. In some cases, it's better just to buy a second Call to Arms than a Homeland Defense so that you have that increase in those stats more consistently. Oh, well, oh, not all of the DTs were out. Damn it. I don't like it when all of the DTs are not out. It means using my ability was a bit of a waste because that one particular one did not get affected by it all. Uh, anyways, we are going very well for round 95. Sometimes round 95 is an absolute pain in the butt. Uh, Pierce is a pain in the butt right now. We have to rely on our fire rate to get us through the scenario in order to try and generate enough Pierce. Uh, if you throw enough stuff at the wall, some of it will eventually stick. But it depends if it sticks or not initially. <laughs> uh, Dear me, you trying to apply this kind of logic to Balloon's Tower Defense. It does make sense. This engineer is honestly going to be the main thing that will probably stop us from getting a 2 mega pops, but because of how far we are in the game, I do not believe the engineer is going to pose a threat to us. And this thing is very good against single targets, but when it comes to lots of targets like this, you can kind of understand why we're falling off a bit short and we're relying on the wonderful absolute zero, and it was a good thing that we got it before the balloon sabers. 
so that we can freeze these Moabs and be able for them to get permanently stalled using the permafrost, which comes after Cold Snap. Where are you, Overclock? I need you! I bet people will say, well, you could actually do this with Buckshot only. So if you were just to get Buckshot, you would be that little bit better at the game. And I say you are correct, but at the same time, I've got a golden rub and not give myself into incredible insanity. Just like people kept hounding me for a base start to Mega Pops. And even when I did it, people were still complaining that it's not base because I bought upgrades to it. Even though those upgrades did not exceed tier 2. Anyway, that's round 96 taken care of. Round 97, let's put down Jerry's fire. Let's put that down so we can get more damage on the camo balloons, which is good against the DETs. Not going to use Jar of Pickles anytime soon. Uh, put Creepy Idols down on round 100. So we should use that. We should use that as well. Now, my next question is what am I going to do with the rest of the money in which we have? Do we go for a glue storm? I don't think that is wise of us. I think it's too late in the game to fully utilize Blue Storm. We should just settle with Blue Strike. Uh, obviously, I should have gotten that a bit earlier so that we can stall the BFB. It's not, not the BFBs, the Moabs and the DTs. <laughs> Once upon a time in update 38, this was able to stall BFBs and ZOMGs. Isn't that brilliant? Uh, but unfortunately, Ninja Kiri had to patch it out, even though that was an unintentional add-on to the game. Round 98, the biggest of the rounds when it comes to RBE. Red Balloon's equivalent. How many balloons, sorry, red balloons can you compact into a single balloon? That is the question. I really want all of these fortified balloons to be quashed first before we handle the ZMGs. Because honestly, the fortified property is such an annoyance to try and deal with. Especially when you have a very small pierce cap, which what the bads has anyway. So, I kind of want to try and do that. Oh, they're making their way very far down here. But I don't think they'll be able to get that much close to the exit. Because now we have call to arms. <laughs> I think in some cases it would be better if I actually did a manual targeting rather than target independent. Because I was kind of hoping to always just focus on the, uh, the fortified balloons, but because of that factor, we kind of didn't manage to do that. Okay, so this has 11,000. Okay, 15,000. Yeah, around 15,000 was stolen. Right, we should utilize the creepy idol here, the creepy idol there. Obviously, the balloon sabo, which I clicked by mistake, was actually a good decision there. Yeah, I think we've got this in the bag. And if not, then we've got a better idea on how to tackle this for the next attempt. If that is the next attempt. Uh, let's try not use the blue striking mode for like we need to. Oh my god, there's too much pierce required here. There's definitely too much pierce required here. Would you please aim this way? Let's aim. Yes, do more manual now. This is honestly annoying me now. Let's do it manually rather than trying to target everything everywhere. And there we go, Gerardo's shop is now complete, which means we'll be able to use this betterly. If there's even such a word as betterly. Uh, we'll put it there, actually. Uh, use foes, don't want to use quarter of arms, rather we'll have that for around 100. Hmm. Spike Storm is definitely a possibility. But then, the Alchemist will be out of a question here as, to, as terms to affordability. But can we do that? Can we do both? Only one way to find out. That is by going around on Druid. Let's see. We can't do both. We can't have both a Strongest Stimulant Alchemist and a Spike Storm to down. So we're going to have to think of this a bit differently. I'm hoping for this alchemist to just reach the bats rather than target the glue strike. But because of the fact that this has zero popping power, can this still target despite the fact that it doesn't have any means of popping balloons? I hope that this ignores the glue strike. I haven't really tested that out. So let us begin and see where we go. So it's definitely reaching back, which is good. 
And we'll be able to reach everything else. Okay, so blue strike there. Gonna use call to arms now. Okay, the Ted is now banished, which is good. Okay. I think we're in good position here, even though this is gonna do a little bit of damage towards that. I'm gonna wait until this has gone past the alchemist. But then again, look at all that. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, we've got this, but it's just a matter of surviving now. <laughs> yeah, there was absolutely zero doubt, but I was just a little bit too hesitant there to go flat out with all that. So that is definitely possible. I think this runs out very quickly just because of how fast it fires, but all in all, that was a very good run with all of this intact. Obviously, call to arms means that this fires out more spikes and each spike pile gets 50% more pierce. So even though that call to arms is no longer in effect, but because of the fact that certain piles were placed out while the call to arms was in effect, some of those piles of spikes that are laid down on the field obviously has that effect still apply to them. Thank you all so much for watching. This has been Two Mega Box with the Balloon Area Denial System. And we shall see each other on the next and final video covering two Mega Pops on all beginner maps. Skates, actually. A rather wintry map itself. And here's a clue it used to belong to the Earth, it once roamed it as its king. And, um. Uh, it was taken now by gigantic, well, spatial objects, let's just say. Thank you so much for watching. If you were ever to give me a late Christmas gift, and that is by putting in this creator support code when you purchase anything from the in-game store. Thank you so much for watching and take care of yourselves, everybody.